Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing angiogenesis uh, in chronic inflammation. So we're just discussing the immune response at the moment. So we've discussed the acute inflammatory response. We're now discussing the adaptive immune response. So we've just discussed the humoral adaptive immune response. Now let's discuss the cell-mediated adaptive immune response. So let me get another piece of paper. Okay, right. So... The cell-mediated immune response is initiated against pathogens which are intracellular, okay? Now, basically you have to understand two things. Firstly, if you've got an intracellular pathogen, so let's say this is a cell here, okay? And here's its nucleus. If you've got an intracellular pathogen, will it always be intracellular? Well, the answer is no. It will be intracellular for some time, so here's our pathogen on the surface, but it will go into the cell, it will divide within the cell, and then it will have to spread to a new cell. So at some point, the offspring of this pathogen are going to have to leave the cell and go into the interstitial fluid for a while and be extracellular, and then um, go back into another cell, a new host cell. Okay, so... Basically, the important thing to understand is that they are intracellular, but they're also extracellular for some time. Now, this means that antigen-presenting cells are going to activate not only CD4 positive, sorry, not only, well, they're going to activate two types of T cells, basically. So, if we say this is our antigen-presenting cell, if the antigen-presenting cell actually becomes infected by uh, the intracellular pathogen, then basically what it will do is it will go to the lymph nodes, okay? It will present antigens of this uh, intracellular pathogen on its surface. Well, it will present fragments of the antigens anyway. And then it will activate what's known as a CD8 positive naive T cell, okay? So this is the CD8 positive naive T cell. So in the lymph node, you also have a huge number of CD8 positive naive T cells. And just like the CD4 positive naive T cells, these T cells are all different, basically. They all are, are targeted against a slightly different antigen fragment, okay? So each individual CD8 positive naive T cell will be targeted against a different antigen fragment. So what will have to happen is this antigen presenting cell, which has a fragment of an antigen uh, from this pathogen mounted on its surface, will have to look long and hard for a CD8 positive naive T cell, which is perfectly matched for this antigen fragment. And when it finds it, what will happen is this CD8 positive naive T cell will become activated and it will differentiate into what's known as a cytotoxic T cell. So it's going to become what's known as a cytotoxic T cell. So it's going to differentiate, so this process is differentiation, which means um, specializing in which cell type you are. Okay, so differentiation, and it's now called a cytotoxic T cell. Okay, and that's why we've denoted it TC for short. Um, the T is for T cell, and then the little c is to, note, to denote cytotoxic. Okay, then what will happen is this cytotoxic T cell will divide. Okay, so division is going to follow. And it will become many cytotoxic T cells. So I'll draw three, but of course you'll make thousands, if not millions of these things. Okay, so here are our cytotoxic T cells. Now what will happen is these cytotoxic T cells will go into the blood, okay? So they will leave the lymph node and they'll go into the blood. And what they will look for is other cells all around the body which have this intracellular pathogen. So let's say this is just a normal cell within the body, so it's not a professional antigen-presenting cell, okay? However, it is capable of antigen presentation, and this is an important thing to understand that this cell up here, which went to the lymph nodes and activated the CD8-positive naive T cell, this was what was known as a professional 
antigen presenting cell. Okay, and the examples of professional antigen presenting cells are dendritic cells and macrophages. Okay, specifically dendritic cells, although what I've drawn looks nothing like a dendritic cell, but um, dendritic cells are quite difficult to draw. They ha they're, m they're more difficult, they take more time than just drawing a circle. Okay, so professional antigen presenting cells. Okay, and the important thing to understand about these cells is that they're not special because they can present antigens. They're special because they can actually activate the CD8 positive naive T cell. Normal cells can present antigens, but they can't activate the T cells, okay? So that's what's special about these professional antigen presenting cells, which include the dendritic cells and also uh, the macrophages. Okay, right. So now let's discuss what these cytotoxic T cells are going to do when they come across a normal cell that is infected with our intracellular pathogen. Okay, so here is our normal cell that is infected with the intracellular pathogen here in red. And what will happen is this normal cell, so this is an infected cell, I should say, probably, because it's not a normal cell, it's got this intracellular pathogen in, but it's just some peripheral cell, okay, that was unlucky enough to get infected. Okay, so it will have all of the antigens of this pathogen within it, basically. And it, too, will chop up these antigens, and it will present fragments of those antigens on its surface. Okay, and when these cytotoxic T cells come and find this infected cell, which has these antigen fragments that this cytotoxic T cell was targeted against. So remember, this cytotoxic T cell was specific, well, the CD8 positive naive T cell was specifically targeted against the exact antigen fragment that this antigen presenting cell just happened to present it. Okay, that means that its offspring, its cytotoxic T cells and its um, huge great population of cytotoxic T cells here, they are all targeted against this specific antigen fragment. Now, when this infected cell uh, exposes that specific antigen fragment on its surface, these cytotoxic T cells will recognize that, and it's basically, uh, this infected cell has put a flag on its surface which says, I'm infected, basically. And what these cytotoxic T cells will now do is they will cause apoptosis in this infected cell. So they'll cause this cell to commit suicide. And it's via the extrinsic apoptosis pathway, the fast, fast ligand pathway. And if you want to learn more about that, there is a video on it in my cancer playlist. Okay, so when the cytotoxic T cell finds cells which have the antigen fragment which it is directed against on their surface, then that cytotoxic T cell knows that this cell has been infected by the intracellular pathogen and will kill it. And basically, when a cell undergoes apoptosis, everything within the cell is destroyed, so the pathogen doesn't stand a chance. It'll be destroyed in that process. So, basically, it's kind of like a kamikaze um, attack, basically. You get the cells that are infected to commit suicide, and when they do, they kill the pathogens that are within them. So you sacrifice quite a few cells in order to save the metaorganism. Okay, right, so that's one arm of the uh, intracellular um, or cell-mediated immune response, but there is another thing to consider. Okay, so this was when the antigen presenting cell, this professional antigen presenting cell, actually got infected itself. So the pathogen was just in the cytoplasm of the cell. And that's why it activated CD8 positive naive T cells. And we've missed off, oh no, it does have a T there. Because it presented the antigen fragment on a certain molecule that was specific to the antigen actually just being in the cytoplasm of the cell, okay? And for those of you who know, that's major histocompatibility complex class 1, okay? Whereas, whoops, nothing on there, uh, whereas this other uh, attack here, which was the humoral attack, 
when the pathogen was extracellular, the antigen-presenting cell had to phagocytose the pathogen and get the antigen within a phagosome, and then it could present the phagos uh, sorry, it could present the antigen fragment then on a different molecule. It presented it on major histocompatibility complex class two. Okay, so I might as well put this down now. So it was presenting it on MHC class two in this case and on MHC class 1 in this case, which is why it recruited these different types of um, T cells, basically. Okay, so this one is the one that you use if you've actually got the pathogen inside you anyway, whereas this one is the one you use where the pathogen is inside you, but it's inside a phagosome. So you had to eat it, basically. You engulfed the pathogen. The pathogen didn't, didn't just come into you. Okay, now... Certain um, certain pathogens are actually capable of living inside a phagosome, basically, okay? And these will require a cell-mediated response, even though they aren't actually going within the cytoplasm of the cell, okay? So they're within the phagosome, but they're going to require a cell-mediated response rather than the uh, extracellular humoral response. So I'll elaborate on this more in the next video.